What suggestions do you have for writers on developing character? So for me, uh, you know, Hunger Games is no good without Katniss. Uh, that you, like you like Katniss is the end. Uh, Harry Potter is the is the end. Like you have to have a great hero, or your products don't work. Obviously, it doesn't matter how good your story world is. It doesn't ha matter how good your 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 plot is. You have to have a character that that people that people care about. And so when you know you're 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 talking about the individual journey of the character and how to develop the character, I think. Personally, it goes back to soapbox. I think it goes back to that thematic that you're trying to to create and develop. And if you know what you want to say, uh, then you will naturally know how to develop your character. And so, uh, because typically your soapbox will be um, be something that your character needs to learn. And uh, if if you know you you want to teach people how to uh, how to you know overcome disabilities and uh, or 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 you know if you go, go back to the Joseph Campbell thing about like you know uh, achieving or, or embracing your destiny right so uh, neo story the matrix for, for example neo story is I think his soapbox that message of, of his character goes from uh, uh, you know somebody that that embraces their destiny and they have this tremendous destiny that they achieve that he achieves at the end really interesting character development that happens there but his starting point is him not him needing to find out the soapbox is he, he he's at a he's at you find him in a place where he he doesn't feel like he has any purpose any de any great destiny at all he's stuck in a cubicle has a meaningless life and so his starting point there is is a great starting point because if you then when he achieves the soapbox at the end of the movie that's what creates the the development so I think you know uh, any any good screenwriter is going to tell you when you develop a character. It's cool to, I think, add in a high concept to that character. I think it's cool to, uh, uh, you know, make that character interesting in a lot of different ways. But if you, the emotional arc of the character needs to be rooted in what are they learning, what, what's their deficit at the beginning, and, and, and how do they realize that soapbox toward the end. And um, that's what gives them the emotional journey. And I think if you tie that to the, it's basically like the A and B story, right? Like you have uh, your, your A story, which is the physical goal they're trying to achieve. So in Taken, the, the A story is all about how do I get my daughter back? But then the B story is, is basically how do, I, how do I become a good dad? And sort of the, the emotional deficit that he, has in, is, is, that he has in the beginning is what he learns toward the end of the movie. And so, um, so it's tying those two things together, I think, really makes the, the good character development. But, but from a transmedia perspective, I think uh, always understanding how to give your individual character a high concept and also giving them in, interesting looks. And this is something that like, you can pull from, from George Lucas, is that, is that Darth Vader would not be as iconic if he was just a dude in a robe, right? Like, I think there's something about the, about the look of Darth Vader that makes him iconic. Uh, Boba Fett, uh, you know, characters that have interesting dress, interesting objects that they have. Um, uh, the, the, the costume design, I think, goes a lot into what makes a character interesting. If you go to Black Panther, I think, you know, the, like the female warriors, the way they were dressed, the way they looked, I think that added so much to the character. And so um, there's a, um, a, uh, uh, one, of my, um, one of my friends in the transmedia community, uh, Jeffrey Long, he, uh, he, always, he always says that to have an interesting character, they need to have an interesting silhouette. And uh, if the more interesting their silhouette is, then the more striking and memorable they'll be as a character. And uh, then, you know, the more you do that, then the more, you know, I think, the more story potential you're gonna naturally have. Uh, but I think that, you know, the gas in the car when it comes to character is what's their emotional journey, what's their physical journey, and, you know, where's their starting point, how they, how they end. But then if you can also layer in the high concept to them and then add in like sort of an interesting look with interesting objects, give them interesting secrets that nobody else knows. Uh, I think the little things right like that make characters awesome. Like I love the fact that Indiana Jones is scared of snakes. Like that's just a really like small thing to add into the character, but super effective that gives that, that interesting character depth. So understanding like what are your characters afraid of? What's a secret they've never told anybody? Doing that sort of work then, then even if you never reveal those things in your first story, in a transmedia world, those are things that you can kind of pick on and use as jumping off points moving forward. You know, I used the movie um, 
quiz show a couple times. Yeah. But I realize I'm going back like probably 20 years. But yeah. I find that a very interesting look at two characters. Sure. One who's actually not telling the truth, but he's regarded as the hero. Yeah. And the other one who's actually being honest, and he's actually in a tough situation, being like henpecked and told he has to make more money. But he's actually painted as a villain. Sure. And I just think it's a very, I mean, it's based on a, loosely based on a true story. But maybe talk about the, like, wh why are we perceiving Ralph Fiennes' character as really the hero? This guy gets a, an applause from the subcommittee or whatever, and, and he's, like, praised as this golden boy. Sure. And John Turturro is actually the bad guy. Yeah. I, I think this is really interesting. Just, I think that is a commentary on culture of, of how we root for, for certain characters or don't root for certain characters. I mean, I always, the, the, a great example of that is, I think, is Breaking Bad. Of you know that Walt is doing bad things, even after he passes the point. Like at first, you justify it as like he's doing it for good reasons, but then like everybody kind of gets the fact that he's that he's doing it. He, he's he's Breaking Bad, right? And that's the whole point of it. But we're still rooting for Walt. The entire like we're still rooting for Walt. One of the most derided, like hated characters on that show was uh, his wife. Like people, right. like people didn't like his wife, and she, like you know, uh, she was a good person that wanted to do good things, and uh, and so she was the good guy. Walt's the bad guy, but the way we the way we cheer for them is 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 flip flopped, right? Uh, I, Forrest Whitaker um, uh, was I heard an interview with him when he he started on the Shield. If you remember the shield uh, on FX and Vic Mackey, one of the greatest TV characters of all time, he, he's he's a bad guy. He's he's straight up a bad guy, but he's the protagonist, and and we root for him the entire time. Forrest Whitaker is the is the cop who comes to investigate him. He's the good guy. We we hate that guy. We hate the character, and uh, and it's just we we flip flop. Going back to an old Johnny Cash interview that I heard, is he he would talk about how how uh, when he would sing Folsom Prison Blues, whatever he would when he whenever he would deliver the line. Uh, I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Crowds would roar, and they they love that line. And and you're thinking, why would they like that? Like, why did they get excited about this character that Johnny Cash is portraying, shooting a man just to watch him die? This is a despicable, awful, evil thing. But I feel like that's a testament to culture. I mean, even in professional wrestling circles. Right, I mean, if you take it to that, like Stone Cold Steve Austin was a bad guy <laughs> that people loved because he was breaking the rules. I think it's just a an interesting commentary on people and how we we lean into to sort of the bad boy, bad girl. Uh, we lean into those. I mean, I think I think if you look at even the superhero stuff today. Culture. There was a day where Batman and Superman were these square-jawed, wholesome John Wayne type of heroes, and superheroes today. Now we love Deadpool, and I think that's just a commentary on culture and and how culture shifts over time. And you know, there was a time when the John Wayne War movie was ruled the box office, but then in the Vietnam era like that begin to turn to where we didn't want the square jawed, like, you know, sun going down in the background and like the birds flying around and the, the patriotic music. We didn't want that anymore. We wanted something else. And I think, I think that's just a testament to culture and a testament to like the human condition and the human, like the, the human condition of the, uh, the condition of the soul of the audience is, is, and I think, you know, we're trained as far as story, we're trained if you position someone as a protagonist, whether they're an anti-hero protagonist, whatever they are. So you, you almost remove the, the hero villain moniker. If a great storyteller positions a bad guy as a protagonist, we just will naturally root for them. I mean, for example, in Star Wars, they have like lines of comic books that where Darth Vader is the protagonist and you're rooting for them, him the entire time. And he's a mass murdering magician. And, and, and you still root for the guy because we're trained to root for protagonist. I think that's just like hardwired into our brains to where it makes perspective and POV really super important, important to a storyteller understanding that because naturally we root for the protagonist whether or not or despite the fact uh, that, they're, that they're good or maybe they're bad.